hook I'm using is a Camasan. It's a B175 size 10. You could use a size 12 as well. Both are good. Uh, the other hook you could use if you want a lighter hook would be the B170 or, or a wide gape hook with the B160, which is, I would say, that's a good one to try. Especially when you're fishing a muddler. Gives you more of a gape. But anyway, the original fly that I used was the, the 175. Now the thread I'm using is the Chartreuse NAO in uni. We just simply start at the eye of the hook and put down a layer of thread along until we're in line with the barb of the hook. It's this point here. And then remove the waste piece. And I'm going to put a wee bit of flash under the tail. In this case I'm going to use some mirror flash. It's a crystal flash. Just a couple of strands. Paste it just under, under the reason I want it underneath is the flash is sits, it holds the tail a wee bit better. Two or three turns down, two or three turns back. And then trim them about at least a hook length. I don't go much bigger than that or much longer than that. The damsel nymph is only an inch long, so this is slightly exaggerating it already, but you can when you're close to the surface. For the, the tail, I'm just going to use a nice medium olive, marabou. Just remove some from the, the stem. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line, line up the ends. Now, the easiest way to line up the ends is to pinch them apart. Just to, don't cut them. It just looks terrible if you cut them. You want the marabou to the end of the, the flash. So you hold the wing or the tail on your finger thumb and then I like to draw back and pull all these the excess fibre that you don't need. Take them away. And then catch it down. Now you, you need a third, at least a third for the head, for the muddler head. And there we are. Now the rib I'm just going to use a, this is Unifloss and Chartreuse. Take a strand away. And then just I'm going to catch this on the side. Again, the full length of the body. Now at this point, just make sure you tie it down. Now, if you watch your thread, it just gives you plenty of grip. And it stops if you're tying something onto the body, obviously rotating, just tidy up and then come back down. All the way to the tail. The body's some olive seals for. So just a tiny bit of olive glass that I've blended through it. Don't need a lot. Slide it up. I don't put it on too tight. It's quite reasonably loose. And as you go, tighten up. I mean, just make sure it stays on the thread. Because as you wind, it'll want to unravel. There we are. That's you ready for. I put a body hackle on this. Now this is a an olive dyed olive cock saddle hackle. Now the the fibre length is. Reasonably short, it's not too long. I don't want it too long. Just catch it on the side and wind up. And then I usually like a turn or two at the top. And then you're looking for three to four turns on the way down. Now, before you bring up the rib, or you start it, I usually roll it in my finger and thumb to tighten it up. So it doesn't spread too far, it just stays nice and tight and on the root and a rope type. And then you want to come up good forty five turns. Cross your thread and then tighten up. Remove the excess. Again make sure you've got wax on your thread. And then carry one down to the eye. And then come back up. There we go. 
this point I like to just get some velcro and bring out some of the seals for in between the rib and into the hackle. Softens it up. We put some rubber legs on this. And these are centipede legs. Speckled yellow. It's in there. And these are the small. Now if you stretch them you'll lose that bar. This painted bar on there, the dark colour. But I wouldn't worry too much about it because they still work. Uh, just don't stretch them too much. Now we've got two lengths there. Now you want the legs to reach at least the back of the hook. And all I do is catch that on the side. Put in a good three or four turns. And then you bring these around, slightly stretching them. Don't stretch them too far as I say, because you will remove the black bar. And then you want to obviously cut them the same length. And there we are. Just make sure they're nice and tight. Again, make sure you've got wax on your thread. Now I'm going to go down and come back up just to tidy the area I'm going to tie in the deer here. It's important that you do that. Make some sit. Now there's your legs there, just come on either side. And then, this is some deer here. This is a roe deer. Uh, it's from the belly area, so it's a wee bit lighter. And it's been dyed. It's been dyed yellow because it's a grey colour. And it's been dyed yellow. So that gives you a nice olive or a light olive. So remove them. A length or a few fibres from the skin. As I say, when you form a nice collar with that, and you want the ends just to the, the back of the body. Now I'm going to put two loose turns, one, two, and then allow the deer here to travel all the way around, and then tighten up. And then you draw this, draw the deer here fibres back, now always keeping the thread nice and tight, just draw them back, and then tighten up. Even take the thread down to the eye and come back up. Again, this will make everything sit the way you want. Now I'm just going to cut the rubber leg in the way around there, so I'm going to bring it back up. That's fine. And then get some more deer here. Again, cut it close to the skin. I mean, so if you cut the deer here right down at the roots, Makes it easier when you go back to cut some more because you don't want half cut ends getting in the way. Now this time I want the bottom, the hollow end of the fibre. I don't want the tapered fibre at the at this point because I want to form the muddler head. Now all I do, the easiest way to do this is just to put a bunch of deer here that you have, put the eye in the centre of it, hold the ends and then go around two turns and then tighten up and then allow the deer here to spin or come round with the thread turns as you go towards the eye. And tighten up. One, two, three, four turns. And then trim away your thread. At this point, all I'm going to do is bring out the cut ends. Just take your time. You don't want to catch the collar or anything else. Make sure they're like 90 degrees from the stem. Now I'm going to get a, this is a razor blade. I'm going to cut in straight underneath. Just be careful you don't catch the legs. It's okay. And then for a curved pair of scissors, just come up using the angle of the eye, and the angle of the scissors to come round. And then form a nice shape. To say watch your legs. It's very easy to catch them. Same on the other side. It's got to 
take your time. Now I would find it sometimes easier to take the fly off the vise and do this. But you'll not see if I do that, so it's going to be take my time and show you. And there we are. Have a quick look. Any cut ends that you may have missed, take them away. Now, we below, make sure. You can see what you've cut away and what's left, and if you're happy with it, you can leave it. That looks, that looks okay. Now you could cut away the hackle underneath as well, but I would just leave it. Now what you want to do is when you go to fish the fly, is put your floating on the head area, in the body if you can. And the one I use, I use a muslin, just a simple cream, or a silicon, that I like, it never, I don't get any of this oil slick coming from it. And when you put it onto your, you put it onto your fingers and rub it so it's clear, and then you apply the floating. And you'll find it will float up as long as you want. As long as you keep it dry, you allow the fly to dry. If you hook a fish, clean the fly and then dry it. Now just put some varnish into the eye area and then make sure the eye is clean. And that's you ready. And that there's your, your damsel muddler. A great pattern to have when the, the damsels are coming off. Uh, just fish it along the edge, weed beds, and you'd be surprised at the fish that come to it. Certainly what's a treat. And that there's my damsel muddler.